This week in PlayStation, we're talking about which you'd rather support between handheld and VR. Something PlayStation-related is happening at the Super Bowl, and Greg and I open up some PSVR 2 boxes. We'll have all this and more because this is PS I Love You XOX. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm Blessing, that's Janet, that's Barrett's on the ones and twos, and this is PS I Love You XOXO, your weekly PlayStation podcast that you can watch live on patreon.com slash kindoffunny or later on podcast services around the globe. Remember, you can use Epic Creator Code kindoffunny on all Epic Store and Epic in-game purchases like Rocket League and Fortnite to help support the channel. To be a part of the show, head to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y to write in with your questions, PSN messages, and more. And remember, patreon.com slash kindoffunny will get you the show ad-free plus a bevy of bonus content. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Shady Rays and Honey. But let's start with a PSN message from you. First of all, before I get to the PSN message, Janet Garcia, how's it going? It's going. You know, we're here. We're hanging out. Um, I have finally got my headphones to be wireless, so pretty excited. I thought there was something different. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for noticing. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. We're Gregless today. Greg had an emergency that he had to go take care of, and so it's just me and you. But don't worry, if you're an audience member, you will get some Greg later in the episode during the tots portion. Um, but I'm doing all right. I'm wearing an X-Cash shirt because I'm a trader. Yeah, what's with that? It's just, I, I talked about this a few episodes. I just really like the design of it, and also it's really comfortable. Have you had, have you had a chance to check out this X-Cash merch? I have not. I feel like sometimes I miss the better merch drops because I'll not want to take too many things or like when we when i was there for like the studio launch i'm like oh i'll I'll grab stuff later because i'm like you know second removed from like the main staff so i feel like that's what it's there for you should have taken it then are more visitors i did take a lot of stuff but like i didn't take everything and then when i went back to get like oh what's the there's a skew that everyone like everyone has like that camper jacket style yeah, yeah that was very popular and i and i just assumed there'd be some left and there there weren't so yeah, it's rough. Can't match with Isaiah now, but I mean, I, I I pretty much let anybody come through and take whatever merch they want. I've 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 given merch to enemies of <laughs> kind of funny before. Yeah. Anything yeah. that's not nailed down, I'm like, what do you guys want? That's like, what the I'm filling up the cars with soda. Like, it's <laughs> whatever I can fit in here. I'm yeah. taking it. Of course, uh, kindoffunny.com slash store if you want access to the X Cast merch, and I guess PSLV merch as well. The PSLV merch is alright. It's just old, Janet. We need to yeah, we need to come back. Like, I feel like we we came out real strong with like the bomber jacket. You know the um the design of all the, the different, bomber like, jacket. We had the sweater as well. Is a vibe, yeah. But it, again, it also just, it doesn't pop on camera as much like when we're doing like video stuff because it's like so dark. So we need a, a little bit of a refresh, I think. Janet Christy writes in to kindoffunny.com slash p s i l y just like you can. It says, "Hey y'all, I had a hypothetical situation that I think would be an interesting discussion for the p s i p s i love you crew." Simply put. If Sony had to choose between investing in the VR market or investing in handheld market, which direction would you a personally prefer they go, and then b think it would be more uh, think would be more beneficial to Sony? Uh, beneficial can be defined in any way you see fit. Assumptions for the conversation: one, investment in either in either option will not impact PS5 in future consoles, games, software, etc. Two. Investment in either option will not be half-assed, meaning Sony will look to make the best product possible when factoring in things like specs, price point, software slash games, etc. And three, you cannot choose both. Much appreciation, Chris. So, Janet, we're getting into a handheld versus VR battle here in terms of, I guess let's start from the top, right? Which would you personally prefer they go? Janet, do you want to, are, are you looking forward to a PlayStation virtual reality console as I'm sitting right in front of these two <laughs> PSVR 2 boxes? Or would you prefer a handheld from Sony? I frankly would prefer the handheld. I mean, I think that's sort of the easy answer in the sense that it just is inherently has like a wider reach. You know, there's a, a bigger spread of games you can put on there. And I think especially in the era of the Steam Deck, as you know, you know, mm. living there in your in your PC world uh much to andy cortez's dismay um you can do so much like with handheld gaming uh, granted like obviously that price point could be really high but i think we've really gone past the era of handheld games needing to be handheld specific so the idea of like something as powerful as a steam deck but for playstation games like that would be so cool obviously it's nice to see playstation 
putting some of their IP onto PC and kind of making that a reality in that way. But I've always loved PlayStation's handhelds. You know, I got the Vita super late because we, we all know how that went. Um, but I, I was there with the PSP right away. And I still think about that to, to this day. And obviously you can try to like make your own handheld by just putting your like phone into the, the backbone. And they just came out with um, one that's officially like a PlayStation controller version of the backbone with like, the PlayStation button layout. So there is a way to sort of get that experience, but like it's very much a sort of thrown together imperfect solution to that. Like I still find myself playing PlayStation games and just wishing I could have a true handheld version of some of those experiences. Um, because I, I like, you know, the, the console, the platform, the trophies, the vibe of it. But sometimes I do miss having a little bit more of that freedom that you can get from either a, you know, multi-use console like the Switch or something like the Steam Deck. But what about you? I think it's a it's almost an unfair question because we're at, we're yes. on the precipice of the release of the PSVR two, and so we know how it feels leading into a PSVR two rather than like how it would feel like getting into a um, a hypothetical PlayStation handheld console. I think generally, and all, and also here's the thing I'll throw out. I also think the premise of the question is, is a bit flawed, right? Because when I look at that number two assumption that Chris G puts out here, the investment of in either option will not be half half-assed. And he goes on to list things like, you know, specs, price point, software slash games, et cetera. We're sitting at a, we're, we're, we're sitting at a pres precipice of a PSVR 2 that, I think has a price point that's a bit high, right? Comparative to what you maybe you'd want out of the uh, out of the VR space, and then also you're sitting at um, uh, you're sitting on a software library that I think has a bit to be desired uh, there as well. If we're talking about PlayStation deciding whether or not to put out a VR headset that has an incredible library and a really competitive price point in a handheld system with a competitive library in a in a, um, in a competitive uh, price point, I think it gets tricky because. I, I, you mentioned that we're w with handheld. We've gotten to the point with handheld where you can kind of expect um, console level games on handheld. And for P where we're at with PS5, if we get a PlayStation handheld, are we just playing PlayStation games on the handheld? Are we just playing yeah. God of War Ragnarok on the handheld, right? A handheld version of it or a cloud version of it or whatever whatever that looks like. And on that level, for me, and, uh, and th this is, of course, going to hit people differently. I own a Steam Deck. I own a Switch. I own handhelds already. I can play God of War, uh, God of War 2018 on my handheld, right? I'm sure one day maybe I'll be able to play God of War Ragnarok on that handheld. Um, that said, VR, PlayStation VR games, theoretically, I can only play in VR, right? And so, like, if I'm getting a quality, again, if we're, if we're talking about a quality library, if I'm getting a quality Astrobot game, if I'm getting a quality London Studios game, if I'm getting, you know, um, uh, the big first party games that you would expect on a PSVR headset. I might lean toward VR. That said, I, I think the part of the conversation where Christy talks about which would be more beneficial to Sony is interesting, especially when you just look at the reality of it, right? If you take out the either option will not be half-assed, right? Or like if we take in the idea that, hey, we are putting, as PlayStation, we're putting out these products in the reality we live in, in the market that we live in. We've seen the mar market go back and forth, both in terms of VR and in terms of handheld, where a few years ago, PlayStation says we're not making a handheld. We're like, oh, yeah, we get it. Because <laughs> handhelds just aren't hidden. Now we're in a post Switch world and we're in a post Steam Deck world. And we're in a world where I'm like, yo, I could see them trying again. I don't think they would try, but I could see them trying again and, and seeing if it's something that works out because handhelds, I think, have, have uh, caught on uh, a bit more since we had a dip after the, the like around the Vita era, right? Post, post, post Vita era. Whereas right now with VR, I think VR, we are seeing a bit of a dip. And that comes to, comes back to the fact that I think VR is very much a, it is, it is for the fan. It is for people who have the, the disposable income income to spend on something that is different, unique niche, but is going to speak to a very specific way to play. You got to have money to do that kind of thing. And right now I think we're at a time where, not as many people have uh, as much disposable income to spend on something that is questionable in terms of where the library is going to be at in one or two years, right? Like for me, if I'm somebody who's going to wait for VR, I might give it a the first year or so before I make the, the commitment to, to to jump in. And that's me if I'm more of a casual person. I'm, sh I'm sure hardcore people would jump into it. But I guess for you, Janet, from a which would be more beneficial to Sony, do you think we're at a place where vr would is better or handheld is better or neither oh man that's tough i do like what you bring up with the diversity of the library because that is a good point like in this theoretical world where 
a handheld on the table, if it really is just more of the same games available, is that enough to move the needle for people? It would be for me, but it does, it doesn't offer new to anybody else. So I think it does run into that problem. While if you think of this, the Steam Deck as kind of a competitor, like a high end competitor, you have such a wide spread because it's like all of like, well, not all of PC gaming, but essentially like it's a lot more of a vast library. And I think too, just PC gaming is much more of like a tethered experience historically. So I think that differentiation is enough to get people excited. The idea of any other Astro Bot games, I think is enough yeah. for me to do, I'd do anything. I do anything and, for it. And, it's funny. I was on I was on TikTok and I saw someone, I don't know how much they were like meant it, but they're like, I bought a PS5 just to play the Astro Tech demo. Like, and they were just playing, they were having a blast. And it's like, honestly, it is worth it for that alone. So I think, I mean, I think you both are very much a gamble. And I think even with them releasing PSVR 2, it was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I would have bet that they were just done with VR after the first one. Um, I do feel like thing of history repeats itself. I feel like this might be the last one. You know, we had like the two handhelds, the two VR, like these things come these things come in twos, it seems. Mm -hmm. Um I, I guess the VR would be more beneficial if they can make it get get corner that market a little bit. Yeah. I think, I, that, I think that, if if we can have the software down the line to really back it up, I think that'll that that'll speak volumes. And if they will if they're able to see good sales with VR. Because I think that the difference between handheld and VR right now is that you have certain certain companies really dominating it in the handheld space ma namely nintendo right but then y'all and namely mobile stuff but then you also do have the steam deck coming through and making a big splash and honestly the audience isn't thirsty for options when it comes to handheld whereas for vr right of course we have vr options especially so with something like the the meta quest but i think PSVR 1 was fairly dominant in the, and dominant is put, putting too much. PSVR was successful in that space. And that comes from the fact that a lot of people already owned a, play, a PlayStation 4. PS4s were widely available. PSVR, if you had a PS4 already, was a, um, a good priced product, right? Because you're coming in and going, cool, I don't have to buy a powerful PC and then an expensive piece of hard, uh, VR hardware. The MetaQuest has kind of changed that a little bit, but VR 1, uh, PSVR 1 came a bit before that. Then you also had a library that really did go for it you know if you want to talk if you want to compare the vita library to the psvr1 library in terms of first party output of course there wasn't a persona 4 golden on on vr1 but you did have astrobot rescue mission you did have um uh, uh whatchamacallit uh what's the london studio uh, blood blood and truth yeah blood and truth and then you also had like beat saber and you had um uh, trover saves the Before universe beat saber was like memed as like being ported on everything yep um back when it was more exciting yeah for sure and i think it's such an interesting time for PSVR 2 to be coming out because, like you mentioned, it really did have that corner of the, the more casual, approachable market. And that was its big kind of selling point, its angle, um, sort of what it ended up being known for, I think, at the time. And now so much of that question, like I'm so interested to see what the launch looks like and having people get their hands on it and see what they think. Because I know it's just going to keep going back to that conversation of, but would I play on this instead of my like MetaQuest 2? Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, that answer ends up being no. So they do end up looking back towards the software and are there experiences that I can have on there that I can't have anyone el anywhere else that would compel me to buy into this thing, let alone you have the other part of the market that might not have a PS5 yet. And when they're looking for those VR experiences, it ends up being that even higher price point because you do need that hardware associated with the accessories. So um, yeah, it's really going to come down to what that library looks like and i don't know i'm kind of like weirdly nervous it's so funny because it's not like we work for playstation yeah, we don't have, we don't but you get invested in, in it here. you get it you know yeah you get it you, it's like you're there and i don't know i'm i'm like lightly stressed about it but i am excited to see how this shapes the culture of the ps5 and, and what it's like to be in that ecosystem and what we look back on like we're seeing it happen in real time and there's something like really exciting but also like a little bit stressful yeah um, i think it's just, because, it, it's just it's just because this is uh, we're we're on the precipice. I keep using the word precipice for some reason, but we're about to see a new hardware, a new hardware launch, right? And like, you know, as we've received these things in the mail, right? These boxes came in the mail. I turned I turned to Greg um, yesterday, and I was like, "Yo, I'm like, I'm re actually really excited to check this thing out, right? Because I think new hardware is exciting, especially when it's something that you assume and you know is going to be high fidelity, right? I played PSVR one. I love PSVR one. PSVR one comparative to other VR devices wasn't 
<laughs> the best tech, right? You're working off of, um, well, I guess at this point, right, last gen tech, but also you're you're working off of the PlayStation Move, and you're working off of a PSVR one that felt like it was kind of pulling things together, as opposed to now being in the PS5 and PlayStation having the foresight to go, all right, let's make the the sense controllers. All right, let's let's figure out a way to have it built out so that we don't have this extra box in your living room. It is just one cable that is going to the in, into your console. Um, hey, let's figure out like the in, in terms of software the stuff that makes sense we've already gone through a generation where it is these games have a vr mode this thing has like, no like let's figure out what makes it right right hearing my uh, uh mike howard talk about uh gran turismo 7 and how fun that is in vr that sounds like a hey we we've thought about this but even ahead of the development of this game we've thought about the vr stuff uh, about it um so yeah i'm like i'm very i'm very excited to see how how vr uh two goes and to chris G, chris g's question of or part of the question, right? You can't choose both between handheld and VR if you had to make one. Selfishly, I want to say handheld. Self selfishly, I'd want to say I'd, I I, I want to say that I'd like to see PlayStation make a handheld. Um, you know, just because I have such good memories of the Vita, and also I think handheld is just a really fun way to play. I prefer handheld over <laughs> VR, even though those are weirdly like those aren't really as comparable. But you get what I mean there. But on the other hand, in terms of what I think makes PlayStation makes PlayStation special in the moment right now. It kind of is the VR. You know, people are doing handheld. How many console manufacturers are doing VR? Like, this is PlayStation. You know, like, you have Meta doing it. You have uh, Vive doing it. But PlayStation, out of PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, it is just PlayStation doing VR, which I think puts them in a unique and interesting place. And they have the leeway to go, hey, let's have fun with this thing and, and, and experiment, experiment with this thing. But Janet, speaking of VR... Our topic of the show is a PlayStation VR 2 unboxing. So if you're an audio listener, of course, you know, we're talking throughout the whole thing. But I do recommend you uh, click over to the video to actually see um, whether or not Greg <laughs> tears these things open or not. Um, but enough about that. Now it's time for topic of the show. That's right. Past Greg. Past blessing. I, mean, I it assume future? past I, Janet. Isn't it a future? Because we're going to be doing that in the future? Sh but they... I mean, no matter when they see it, there's a time loop going on. All right. But I guess they're future, technically, for future us. Future Greg, future Bless. Sure. But I guess they were before this segment, so that makes them past. You see where my head's at. You see where my head's at in it. Yeah. It's like, hey, everybody, it's us. And you're probably already hearing us talk unless something's happened, and that does happen in life sometimes, but it doesn't matter. Blessing, we have PlayStation VR, too. We do. I'm so excited. Are you? Because I've been reading the comments on some of your tweets, and they say you hate VR. They say it about me, too. They say we hate PlayStation VR. I am critical of VR, but I am, like we've said many times, a fan of VR. This is the j joke we have all the time of when we're critical of something, and you're like, man, I'm excited for this. I hope it does well. I'm worried about it doing well. And then you say that, you're a hater. And then when of you course. say, oh, man, I'm really excited for this, you're a fanboy. And there's no in-between on any of it. But Let me tell you about this game called Spider-Man Miles Morales. Don't even you. I mean, come on. You openly hate that game. So I open, I, oh, I'm not even going to get into it. I'm, <laughs> gonna trap, I'm not going to let you trap me. Uh, this is a big deal for us. Uh, we haven't actually used PlayStation VR 2. Of course, Mike has. Uh, Snowbike Mike from the X-Cast. Uh, Tam did when he went down to uh, play it at PlayStation. We have yet to hold the, sense, the, dual, uh, the controllers to put it on our face to do any of that stuff. You've not unboxed it. We have not unboxed it at all. So, yeah, exactly. This our unboxing video barrett how do you want me to what camera you want me to play to oh he's got a microphone ready and everything i can play to this one for now as you see there first off uh we got the playstation uh, vr2 and then we also got the official playstation controlling uh stand here so we can go ahead and shove in uh the vr sense controllers and have them there not having to eat up usbs just plugged into the that's wall that's convenient very helpful very it is very Super convenient I, I agree with you uh of course I'll, first things first I, the box was smaller than i thought it would be uh, yeah I, I noticed the same thing too and when i picked it up it was way lighter than i thought it was going to be i think that's because we're used to psvr one yeah we figure it, you know, internally is. right there's or intern inside the box not internally like there's you know, we don't have the big uh kit we got also yeah. connect right it's just gonna be a usb c to our playstation 5 from the, the headset or whatever uh of course you can i'll spin around there you got a nice uh, sense this is not the call of the mountain bundle this is just a straight up playstation vr2 bundle or contents or whatever right a feel a new real cutting edge performance playstation vr2 sense technology quick setup thrilling new world wow what, what's the quick setup say a uh, quick setup, jump straight into the action with a simple one cable connection to your PS5 console, uh, which you got to like. I know a lot of people are, are on the, on the what, the cordless uh, train. Yeah. Um, but at least, at the very least, it's better than the big old box and the big old, big old setup. Remember when it didn't have HDR pass-through, too? That was a big deal with yeah. the pro. Remember that was a big that old little thing? baby PS4? 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it looked like the play, it it PS4. So it had reproduced. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For cutting edge performance, enjoy 4K HDR visuals, a 110% or no, 100%, 110 degree field of view, and advanced graphical rendering. Uh, and then for uh, PSVR 2 sense technology, feel real sensations and emotions with eye tracking, headset feedback, 3D audio, and highly intuitive controls. Okay. I'm ready to feel all of that tonight when I actually get it up. Of course, this is just an unboxing. Of course, thank you, PlayStation, for sending PlayStation VR 2 for review uh, provided by PlayStation. All that jazz. FTC, don't come after us. Uh, but are you ready to get into it? I am. Are you going to do the same thing you did last time with the dual sense? I don't know what you mean. What would I, why would I have done something I swear like to that? God, if you tear open that thing, <laughs> here's what <laughs> like I'll do. a monster. Here's what I'll do. I won't tear it open like a crazy person because I feel like the box can be used uh, as a set dressing. Uh, on the actual, when we're actually doing... Uh, when future us are doing PS I Love You XOXO tomorrow with Janet for the embargo of Friday, mm. we can have them flanking. We can have them on the thing. They will look pretty mm. on the set. You, did, you didn't think about that for the, the dual sense, though? No, it's not that I didn't think about it. It, 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 it. it was just the fucking controller box. Who would want to look at that? People want to look at this. Dressing. Kicking it open, just like the original PlayStation VR. You got that in there, too. You got your, your white box, your PlayStation your box. first look. Yeah. Very uniform look for all the official PlayStation 5. Um, Which I appreciate. Back. I appreciate that they committed to, hey, this is going to be the look. Hey, look at you right now, tough guy, huh? You don't want to tear that box, do you? But it's hard no. to get it open yeah, this way. Yeah, I'm trying, way. To, I'm trying to, to be careful with it. Huh? I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be careful. Don't spill that Coke, bless. You're right. You spilled water earlier today. It freaks me out. I spilled water? Yeah. Remember? Oh, yeah, I did. You're right. Oh. Of course, sacred symbols on both sides of the box here. Flanking it. I can come to you, Barry. Don't worry. There you go. You on the outside. Making it feel like you're getting your money's worth. Yet another sticker in here. Another one here trying to make sure nothing gets out. Nothing gets loose. Can't get loose on you, boys. Make sure no babies get in there. Of know, course, right? if you didn't know it, no babies get in there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. You know? uh, yeah, that tracks. That tracks, <laughs> they, I guess. Would they, want ben babies to can't be get the past one stickers. opening this for the first time? You're sure, you're, good point. Uh, remember, of course, uh, this is out on February 22nd, 550 US dollars. Cords and attachments, but then boom. Right. Into, you're, so you're, you're bringing it out and then unwrapping it piece by piece. Huh? Yep. I like where your head's at. I like where your Is it because I couldn't figure out how to get the whole thing out without tearing it? Yes. Sure, sure. Fair enough. Whatever it takes. All right. So I got the full headset out. Yeah. Look, Give him a tour. Thing. Give him a tour. Look at this thing. Again, you got the one cable coming out the is that left side, left, left back side. You have the knob on the back, which I don't want to mess with it too much because I want to make sure it's on default settings for when I put it on. Default settings, huh? <laughs> Default settings. That's what you're worried about right now. Okay, okay I feel. Uh, cable feels super long, which is nice. Uh, spooled up, it looks like it's going to be nice and long. Like we talked about before, USB-C right into your uh, PlayStation 5, right on your front port, if that's where you want to, which is where I expect you to put it, uh, since, of course, you can disconnect, move it off, and ha have it off on the side, rather than with the crazy-ass box we all had for PlayStation VR 1. I have to figure out where you want to put that and store it and have it underneath i had it underneath my entertainment center so every time i pull it out it'd be have dust bunnies all over it and all this other gross sh stuff cables is, is like thick and hefty agreed in a way that i appreciate that's probably because it's the only cable you got for this thing and so they don't want it to also uh, mess up <laughs> uh worth pointing out i've seen stuff of course i subscribe to the playstation uh vr su subreddit uh they've been good to us remember we had a whole show called the playstation vr show uh they have confirmed over there that uh cable extenders work on it i'm sure that's also on the that's cool. playstation uh faq that is up on the blog yeah hold on i'm gonna see how long the court, court is greg how tall are you holy cow how tall am I? Yeah, how tall six are you? 6'3". Six, three. Six, three? Yeah. Okay. What would Why? you say that is? Two of you? No, that's way more. More than two? Again, this is probably on the FAQ. It's like two and a half, of Greg. Do it the old-fashioned way. So, uh, so we're talking like, like, what, 18 feet? Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. That's, that's more than two of me. A little bit more. A little bit more than two of me. Wow. Hear me in the face. So more like 14 feet then, probably. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, of course, on the back here, you have a headphone jack ready to go into it if you want. Uh, I think it comes with uh, head uh, headphones. We'll get to it. I guess we should run you through what was in the box. Overall, you got the VR headset, uh, the PlayStation VR 2 Sense controllers. Uh, you got the USB cable. You got the stereo headphones, six earpieces, and then printed materials as well. I'm gonna, I am gonna. I want to go right into it. I haven't worn Are you putting the headset on? Yeah. Are you? I'll, I'll, I'll wait for you to do it first. He's like, scared. He's scared. Yeah. Scared. Oh, if you both do it at the same time, we'll, we'll get lost. Great content. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't find the microphones. We're speaking into each other's mouths. It's true. He's got a good point. Okay. I'm in. How's it feel? It you, got your, good. you got your glasses off. I do. 
I don't. I mean, my glasses. I have a week. Pre- I have a week prescription, so I don't. I don't feel oh, okay. the need to really go in there and wear them all the time. There you go, moving that guy. And damn, I'll tell you the first things first. Uh, bless mm-hmm. and uh, viewer who's over here. I assume. Uh it's it's pitch black in here. Wow. That was one of my things for a PlayStation VR one, you right? Have an was an entire studio full of lights pointed at you, right? And now it's too. I, it, like right here. There's no nosebleed. I'm not. You know what I mean? No bleed of light through my nose like there was in PlayStation VR two. I was a big PlayStation VR two person. Of tilt your head up and look down your nostrils to try to see where you are. I guess even with Quest two, I, I find myself doing that. But right in here, no, it's it is it is pitch black. It's wow. pitch black. So that's a a, a good a good vibe to it. Uh, as always, just with you know the what we all learned from PlayStation VR one, incredibly intuitive in terms of okay, cool, it's on. I'm moving it. I'm moving the. Now, how did you how did you extend the headset? Uh, press the button. So on the clicker on the back, the uh-huh, turn okay. right in the center. Gotcha. There's a button. It's it, if you use PlayStation VR one, it's it's very intuitive. Just it's just like that. Not exactly the same, but just like it in terms of like, oh, okay, just mess with it enough, you'll figure it out. But not heavy, not uncomfortable. Uh, you know, again, I loved my PlayStation VR uh, original. I felt like I felt like I was more aware, kind of what Mike was talking about last week, of more aware with VR one of it being on your face. Mm-hmm. This one, I'm not getting a lot of uh, mm. pressure by any stretch of the imagination. How do you feel, Bless? Uh, you're right about the pitch blackness of it. I'm trying to wear it with my glasses. <laughs> Yeah, how's that feeling? Uh, I think it'll take a little bit of adjustment, but I'm getting there. I'm trying not to have the glasses push up against my face. And I do have a weird-shaped head, so that might be a little bit No! You have a beautiful mm. head. Thank you. Right here, I think I've got, I've got a sweet spot right here. And that's just playing around with it for like 30 seconds. I imagine once you get more in there, you can find a, a really good setting for you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, Show me that turn controller, Greg. Tighten it a little bit. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, so this feels comfortable for me, even with my glasses on. Um, which thank God, because I've had that. Before How bad do you need your glasses? Pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. My my, my beats my my beats, my, glasses. <laughs> my beats saver gameplay suffers when I don't have my glasses on. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. We looking at the dual sense. We sure are. Now, what's the official name for these controllers again? Uh, they are the PlayStation VR Two Sense controllers. Sense, so controllers. sense controllers. There it is. I'll tell you what, I don't like the straps with them. Not that I don't like... Safety? N- well, no, I guess uh, that's more what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying it, I just don't like the idea of straps, I guess. That's what I mean. I'm not saying these are bad straps. I'm just saying as I, I for one try love, to learn... Yeah, I love straps. Eh, it's not that bad, actually, now that I have it on and Justin. Yeah, when you're having it through. flapping around, I can understand it being weird and distracting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that I'm settling into it, yeah. Now that you're actually using it like you're supposed to. Greg. You know what, Barrett? I don't need it. I don't need the. I don't need it from he you. He doesn't right need now. it, Barrett. All right, I, I don't need you over here. He doesn't need it. Giving me the business, being a troublemaker. I'm just jealous because those look like cool controllers. So I do, man. The nubs are small. I mean, they're, you know. Oh, yeah, the analog sticks? Yeah, the analog stick nub. But they don't feel too small. No, it's just like compared to the the nubs we're the used to. Sense, yeah. You know what I mean? We're you, we're using big old man nubs left and right around here. <laughs> so uh, the the for the sense controllers, right? You got the on the right hand, you got the X and circle buttons. Left hand, you got the square and, and triangle buttons. Uh, you also have the triggers R two and uh, L two. But then the um, bumper control uh, buttons R one and L one are on the side here, and they're like more they're more clicky, clicky buttons on the side. Sure. Got your PlayStation buttons, options, capture. PlayStation, yeah. They feel good though. This is something Tam talked about. Mike didn't get to use these when he did it, but they don't feel huge, which I like. They also feel, they feel comfortable. Yeah, they're light enough that it's not like a distraction. It'll be interesting to use them tonight to get settled into it. Yeah, I'm very excited to actually feel the sense functionality because yeah. I imagine you're going to have a similar haptic feedback and stuff. Uh, have they mentioned the? Um, did we get the adaptive triggers? I might check the yeah. the thing to see. Check the Barry. Check the blog. But I'm yeah, they did. Yeah, that's their whole deal. Is they got haptics and the feedbacks and the everything's. You're going through your documentation over there. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going through the. Why do you say manual. that so aggressively? What documentation? Yeah. Bust out my password. All right, pop back in here. Another USB C. Uh, USB C to regular USB or what I call regular USB. I don't know what you actually call it, but you know what I mean. Traditional USB for charging your uh, sense controllers. Yeah, you your VR documentation. Yeah, we got our headset here. Oh, interesting. So the, what you have here for uh, the headset itself, for the headphones, not only is it just loose, like you get the earbuds like you had before, it comes with an actual hard uh, stick. 
that you 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 pop in and then they just hang from it. Rather oh. than before where you had remember what I'm talking about before if you're an yeah. audio listener on VR one, you had you know, traditional earbuds you would put in that then were connected to a longer cord of uh head uh heads or what do you call it? A male connector for headphones or whatever. It looked like normal headphones that were your... 3.5. It, and these ones just have a bar that'll plug into the back of the headset so you can then set it, forget One it. One nice wire kind of like floating yeah. around. And so, bam, yeah, then they're just... The head, the headphones are just dangling there like that. Oh, that's nice. Very nice. Very nice. I like that a lot. Uh, so regarding the sense controller features, yes, yeah, so you do have the adaptive trigger. So each VR controller, both left and right, includes the adaptive uh, trigger uh, button that adds palpable tension when pressed... Uh, that's from the PlayStation Palpable blog. Bliss. <laughs> they talk about haptic feedback, of course. Finger touch detection. A controller can detect your fingers without any pressing in the areas uh, where you place your thumb, index, or middle fingers. This enables you to make more natural gestures with your hands during gameplay. I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to see actually how that how that plays out, where they can feel exactly where your fingers are. 100%. Um, the controllers are being tracked, of course. Uh, and they talk about the action buttons and you know, long sticks, which are just the regular buttons. That's really cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you looking at? I'm, f- I'm going through the documentation as well. I was going through the documentation. The documentation. To see what was up with it, just to go through and see. Now, do you also want to check out the Hell yeah, I want to check out the charging stands. Or, you know? Now, this one, though, is what I'm talking about. Oh, just God. Just get it out. Who cares? You know what? Fuck it. You ever going to look at this no, box bless. again? No, ladies no, and no. This is the charging If you station. can't beat them, join them, Let's bless. get crazy. God. This is going to go on your little entertainment center and just sit there and You're be fine. just like Nick, such a flip-flopper, you know? He is a flip-flopper. I'm easily influenced, is the thing. I'll tell you what, I, you know, for my PlayStation 5, when they sent those to us for review, right, they came with a controller charging stand as well. And I still use that to this day every day. You know what I mean? That's where I, my, at home my mm-hmm. chargers sit. So again, this will be That's something awesome. for this, I would imagine, that I'll be using quite a bit too. Put that in there. I will say I am running out of space in my room. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for happen. things like this. And that so, happen. I mean, maybe I got to figure out a living room situation. I'll figure something out. You'll figure it out. I trust you. I believe you. Why do you say that? Do you have a living room? Do I have a living room? Yeah. Yeah. You just said it like you got to figure out a living room situation. Oh, no, yeah. no. I mean, well, usually everything's in my bedroom is the thing. Mm-hmm. Now, the one thing that's interesting about this charging stand is it's similar to some of the old PlayStation 4 uh, third parties I remember having to do it. I don't remember if I ever had to do it for a actual uh, PlayStation license. Oh, they were licensed for sure. I'll get that later. Uh, it is the fact that you don't lay down the controllers in this and have it be USB-C. You have to put a USB-C adapter, a little guy that comes uh, with the controlling stand in there. Not that it matters, right? But you pop it in and then... Got to be careful not to lose them like yeah, I just did. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah, like I just had as it rolled off. But then it sits right there, and I'll go get the, the, yeah. the one I dropped. So you have the um, power cord. Then you have... Oh, no, this is the second half of the power cord. So the power cord comes in two parts. Okay, so how does this sit? Oh, this needs to get to IC. IC. IC where we're going. Which is actually nice because it's, you know, fits to the shape and then locks in magnetically there. And so, bam, they just sit there. That's ready. I mean, I like it. Honestly, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. 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 Some would say the PS5, good looking console. A lot of people would. On a show called Kind of Feudy that I won recently, patreon.com slash kind of funny. You know, we surveyed thousands of kind of funny best friends. Over 1,200. What was the best looking console of all time home console of all time the winner the playstation 5 and spoilers for kind of feud insane that, enc- that encourages them to come watch and see me get the question right and Did tim and andy get really mad you won to yeah no <laughs> big deal maybe i won maybe i have the trophy at home no big deal you know what i mean that's what it's all about but for right now blessing that's what the playstation vr 2 is all about it is uh, as somebody who just unboxed it for the first time, put it to your face and did this, where are we at with your hype levels to go home and play with it tonight? Uh, I'm excited to ch- to actually play it, right? Yeah. Like, I so far like uh, the hardware of it more than the PSVR one, right? And I think yeah. that just comes down to it being less bulky, it having one cable. The dual sense control, uh, sorry, the sense controller is being way more uh, interesting. It's in, you know, I mean, everything about this is better than the PlayStation Move. Like, let's be real, the PlayStation 100%. Move was not great. Yes, um, that's accurate. We can't <laughs> yeah. argue that, folks. We like can't the argue tracking that. tracking on it sucked. The, it, you know, it felt like something that was repurposed to uh, work for VR, but didn't feel like it was built for, for VR. These controllers feel like they're built for VR. Like, these, holding them in my hands, they rival um, what I've used with the Oculus Quest or with sure. the Meta Quest. Sure. Right? Like, they feel, they, they feel like that. They feel comfortable. All the features that we talked about in terms of adaptive triggers, haptic feedback, uh, the finger detection. I think that all is going to be, that all sounds like things that are going to be additive, right? They don't just sound like gimmicks. And we know that because we play with the dual sense. Yeah. So that has me excited. Um, 
and yeah, like it feels good actually wearing. I think that's the biggest thing is it felt comfortable when I put it on. Um, I think I might need to adjust it more to make sure that it is going to be fine with my glasses. And yeah. So I don't have a final verdict on that yet. I got to adjust, uh, adjust it more. But uh, on the first wear, it seems like something that I'm going to be fine wearing on my face for at least like an hour or two at a time. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you don't have to go far to find out about PlayStation VR 2. Of course, our impressions will be embargoed, but that embargo will lift one day and you can find our reviews all on PS. Uh, I love you. XOXO on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games uh, podcast services around the globe. I'm sure if not immediately, sometimes it's going to end up on the kind of funny games cast as well. Of course, subscribe to that podcast feed, but also find it on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Uh, I'm excited to start kicking the tires on this and talk to you all about it soon. But until then, here's future Greg and Blessing and probably Janet. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Look how cool I look. You too can look this cool. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered from the sun to the slopes with premium polarized shades, customizable snow goggles, and so much more. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. They'll also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million meals to date. That's fantastic. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back exclusively for y'all listeners and watchers right now. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the new year. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. These are five star rated by over 200,000 people. Again, that shadyrays.com use the code kinda funny shout out to honey for sponsoring this episode honey is the easy way to save when shopping on your iphone or computer and thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past and we all know there's nothing better than the feeling of saving money honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart when you check out the honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons you wait a few seconds you see the fun little dancing guy honey searches for coupons and it finds you the best ones and then you just watch the prices drop we here at kind of funny have been using honey for years and it's helped us save thousands on tech costumes food you name it honestly i just love how easy it is to just set and forget and save that's the best part honey doesn't just work on desktops it works on your phone too you just activate it on safari on your phone you save on the go if you don't already have honey you could be straight up missing out you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny and we're back thank you so much past greg and blessing janet now it's time <laughs> For this week in PlayStation. Uh, the energy just got, just got brought up all of a sudden. Uh, Janet, we only got one pretty fun story to talk about. Uh, something God of War Ragnarok related is happening at the Super Bowl. This comes from Zarmina Khan at PlayStation Lifestyle. Fans are hoping for God of War Ragnarok a DLC or a new game plus release date as Sony Interactive Entertainment is busy teasing something for the Super Bowl. The teasers have been posted on PlayStation Canada's Facebook and Instagram accounts. Folks over at MP First also received the following message. Quote, PlayStation invited fans to, to keep their eyes peeled on its social channels for more surprises and celebrations of fan favorite PS5 games. Today, Odin's Ravens spotted a new teaser on PlayStation Canada's Instagram and Facebook channels, forecasting a blizzard on Midgard this Sunday night. To see how it all plays out, make sure you tune in to the big game this weekend. End quote. God of War Ragnarok director Eric Williams has already said that DLC is unlikely, so we doubt that we'll see an announcement to that effect. However, fans have been promised a new game plus mode for spring 2023, and considering we're just about getting there, that's what this tease is likely about. I'm going to pause there and say PlayStation Lifestyle, that is not what this tease is about. <laughs> You don't think that they're going to spend their uh, the big money that they had to spend for the Super Bowl to announce New Game the, Plus blessing? The millions of dollars, I imagine, that you have to spend so to get a play. To get a to be like, who are going to watch that and be like, what the fuck is New Game Plus? You don't think that they, they spent all that money for that? Can you imagine being in the, like watching the Super Bowl on Sunday and like seeing the God of War commercial and like and, like the big ending is like New Game Plus, and there's like explosions and fireworks I and shit. See it. And it's like I can't I need I can't watch the rest of this game. I I gotta go do it. I gotta go turn on my PlayStation I Five, and it's it ready being, now. I could see it being like uh, they they have a cool just like a hey, you know, it's God of War, it's PS Five, like a trailer, and then some sort of 
PlayStation blog update maybe this <laughs> yeah. this weekend or Monday being like, yeah. hey. By the way, here's that, a new wasn't update. Wasn't that uh, God of War Super Bowl thing pretty cool? New Game Plus is out now, you know? Yeah. I imagine what this is is it's just going to be a PS5 commercial with a with a montage of PS5 games. And what's the slogan for PS5, uh, Jana? Do you remember? Oh, my God. This is a fun pop quiz, actually. I have no idea. Uh, were you going to say play anywhere? Because that's the first weights. thing that came to mind. No. No. I don't uh, know. Challenge everything. <laughs> You're lying, right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm lying. I'm lying. That's like EA from 2003. Sl- but you know what? That's why they're having the commercial because the fact that we don't know, that's a problem. Play has no limits. Play has no limits. That's what it is. Okay. Um, that's going like to be the end of the commercial. All the other slogans went through. I'm like, do you remember the PS4 like, slogan? It's P- PS3, it only does everything. PS4 was like something about the future, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Which one was Greatness <sighs> Awaits? I thought that was. Oh, uh, that's that PS4. PS4. Greatness yeah, Awaits, yeah, yeah. PS4. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Greatness well, Awaits is kind of hard. Yeah. I like I like Greatness Awaits. That's actually that's cocky. That's cocky. Yeah. Was it, it was, that was that was the era. You know that was the that was the vibe at the time. Um, I mean, this is like such a silly even comment. It's like what I'm hoping for from this ad. <laughs> but I mean, I'd, I'd hope that they do just something goofy with it. I mean, that's kind of what the point of like the Super Bowl ads is to have like the funniest, like most memorable like funky thing you can put out there so um yeah i mean it'll be cool if it's a little bit more than just a straightaway like badass trailer and kind of leans into the fun of it i will say it's been an interesting conversation around playstation ads not that again doesn't really matter that much to a hardcore audience that's already playing this stuff um but people being like oh i don't they, like all they have like all those celebrity ones like in the lead up to ragnarok and like the weird crossover thing so if i had to guess it'd be some other funky crossover thing that even my dad who doesn't know who kratos is can be like well that's funny and he's like oh yeah like it's that's the machine that's in the living room i think for sure <laughs> it's gonna be something fun and goofy like if you look at the teases that, that have been happening the there's been an ad um a marketing rollout ad campaign thing that's been happening for weeks now for playstation where it is random playstation monuments coming uh, or appearing in random places in like the uk it was like a giant um uh like Mjolnir uh uh like hammer just like chilling out there and Barrett I don't know if you're able to, to open up this Facebook link I don't know why they post on Facebook of all places but um there's like a, a thing they did like a social media thing where you see uh the uh, Mjolnir and then it says Fimble Winter at the big game like it's a news report so they're building up to something fun I th- I think it could be cool if it is play PlayStation's taking over the world and the commercial is about yeah, how like cute. right because, video games are invading real life. Yeah, uh, I assume you guys were just talking about the uh, Mjolnir being at. Uh, <laughs> can you say that again, Bear? Uh, being in like London or something, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And so, it's know, for it's sure so gonna weird. be place PlayStation games are taking over the real it's world. It's just such a weird marketing thing of like, all right, like uh, Mew Mew is showing up in London. <laughs> Uh, in real life, and now it's going to show up again at the Super Bowl. At the Bowl. Super Bowl, like what? For what? Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. PlayStation has more a question that. of like why they had that big uh, Mjolnir, uh, Mjolnir uh, <laughs> in in real life in London or whatever it was. This the, is it like was so weird. This it's, is rivaling when I was playing God of War, and my brother called. Um, he's like, "Who is that? Mirror, mirror?" And I'm like, "My mirror." <laughs> Mjolnir. Um, Mjolnir. Yeah, Mjolnir. I, Mjolnir. Wait, do you really? Are you? Are you fucking I, with me no, right now? I, like, I literally, I can't say it. <laughs> I could. I like. If you asked me if I've heard you talk about Thor and Mjolnir before, I would have been like, "Oh yeah, you said Mjolnir, Mjolnir a million times." Mjolnir. 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 <laughs> I just call it Thor's hammer. I never caught this about you. That's like that. really funny, actually. <laughs> I've gone this long without saying it on content. <laughs> Man. That's I'm sorry amazing. this had to happen to you. But PlayStation ads are always like really funky. Like I remember the it was like the one they played dur- I think it was like during a state of play where everyone was like running the streets after like playing a chess match or something. Okay, so like, I wanted to bring that up because I don't Okay. Right. Because PlayStation, I feel like there's some hipsters when it comes to not even hipsters, actually. That might be giving too much credit. I feel like they don't know how to make like fun ads. Because the chess thing felt like it was supposed to be a fun ad. And I think everybody was like, is this a tease for something? Like, what the fuck is going on in this ad? Like, what is all... Are they, do the chess pieces is correlate every, to everything something? Everything has to relate to something, Bless, you know? But, like, make it... Uh, here's what I want. Here's what I want. Okay. Give me a simple ad and it's Kratos and uh, um, Aloy and Ellie drinking tea at a cafe and joking around about their tales and their stories gets, uh, thrown into the the room you know and Mjolnir gets uh, thrown into the <laughs> room that time? and Thor's like is there tea for me <laughs> like give me something <laughs> fun like that 
<laughs> why am like why why is Mjolnir invading the Super Bowl? I hope this is fun. I I want to I, I want to see a fun commercial from PlayStation. They do tend to do like char- like character pieces or like big scripted moments. It's funny when you could think of it in comparison to like the other others of the big three. Like Nintendo's ads tend to be very much like it's B roll of someone playing the game, and then you see the game and they play the game, and that's yeah. like it's at least it's really, it is more like, fun communal. than that. Yeah, so it's like the with the creativity comes um, I don't know some hey we remember it. And isn't that the point? I guess I don't know. I know that anyone else remembers it though. I feel like we remember it because we like live in PlayStation content. But um, I like. I'll, I do I'll like the there. fact I'll be watching. So we'll see what happens. I do like the fact that they're building a viral moment. And if like if there's a pop to this commercial, I imagine it might be something that will show up in video game Twitter, and people are like, "Oh man, you see this dumbass <laughs> PlayStation also, commercial? This, it's crazy." This is gonna make me sound <laughs> a million years old, but. Has this always been a thing I didn't notice before? But I feel like more n- now more than ever, people are like teasing their ads for the Super Bowl. Like, was that always a thing? And I just didn't notice. I think it's I been like for gotten, the last decade. Because yeah, I've gotten it, so many ad teasers. Because there's a good couple of years, uh, I would say, ba- from like 2000. It was always like big uh, Super Bowl ads uh, for as long as I've remembered, but like especially from like two thousand like seven, I want to say to two thousand like eleven or twelve, it was always like uh, like here's these funny and unique ads, and it wasn't like really being built up to. And then yeah, like somewhere along the, uh, I think it was like, like YouTube and the internet that changed yeah, it. Yeah, and it was like um, I remember being in high school in like twenty twelve or twenty thirteen, where there was like a, a Ferris Bueller tease, and it was like, oh my god, are they doing like a fucking sequel to ferris bueller's day off let's go and then yeah it was just like tease for a fucking car commercial for the super bowl featuring uh uh ferris bueller so remember when that yeah. uh that what the, that peanut had a baby yeah i do remember oh, that. Or, yeah. the, or the peanut died and came back as a baby i forget that was happened. 2020 i believe um yeah and so i, I, I think there was that. a couple of years where like they weren't amping up to it or ramping up to it but they were just having like fun weird commercials and stuff but then yeah you know the internet we have to we have to build up to the tease we have to build up our, we have to go for the, for the viral moments yes we have to build up to the tease of our commercial there's the I mean, m&m's thing too that's happening playstation did have that unboxing the playstation box embargo so like anything's possible <laughs> anything, anything is possible janet now it's time for playstation picks that's where we talk about the drop what's coming out this week and the things that each of us have picked to play on playstation uh the one the big game this week uh, that's dropping uh, is hogwarts legacy for ps5 uh janet what'd you pick to play on playstation this week okay um i have finished that space and i have platinumed we were here too like beaten in oh. platinum, we were here too. what should i start with i say dead space Okay. I'm very excited to hear, to hear what you have to say about Dead Space. Is this your first, first time playing through Dead Space? Yeah, this is my first time playing through it. Um, so many. I'm like also thinking about like, oh, spoilers for people haven't played through it. And stuff. I'm not going to talk about the story. I haven't played and, it, so I, I also don't want spoilers because I do plan on fair. playing it. Well, good news. One, I barely understand what I watched happen. So don't worry. I don't think I can spoil the story if I try to. It's actually not that complicated, but, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, first time playing through it. Uh, it was awesome. I really love this game. It it's funny to think of this. So I am very like horror averse in the sense that I'm easily scared, um, kind of jittery, but I can play certain kinds of horror games. Um, I think survival horror is one that I'm a lot more down for. And this having that very like Resident Evil structure to it, which is like the horror franchise that I'm most familiar with and that I've played the most of. Again, not saying a lot because I don't play a lot of horror games. So this this was comfortable for me. It's like we're going room to room, we're looting. It kind of took me a while to get used to, I think, the language of the level design and world. Uh, part of that is like light beefs I have with a lack of uh, some setting options I would have appreciated. I had a really hard time for a while finding what was interactable, where the like the items were in a room. Like I would have loved to like highlight that via an accessibility feature or something like that um but i was able to kind of work through that and figure out okay this is how i explore i should open the map more often and check like what's off to the sides um but i really enjoyed just exploring and i love any game that has like telekinetic abilities so the fact that you can like pick stuff up and launch it love that here for it i like that you can kind of do your own goofy things within the game so i was notorious for like picking up you know the uh fire extinguishers or whatever like thing i could you know the poles i'd carry like poles from room to room and i'd carry a bunch of them you know i'd spend like this game took me like 
16 or so hours to beat. Uh, it was supposed to be 12, but it took me 16. <laughs> um and i was like i'm gonna carry one fan and i'm gonna throw it into the past the door and then i'm gonna grab another one and throw and i'd be like sta standing in an empty room full of like fan blades around me and i'm like i'm ready and like i didn't even do that well when the combat then ended up happening but i like that you can kind of build that you can kind of cheese it in different ways so i really enjoyed that aspect of it really my only beef with the game is um some inconsistent checkpointing uh ridiculously hard and frankly boring boss design um and i think that's kind of my only main gripes uh overall really enjoyable experience weirdly cozy despite being like very dark and twisted but i don't know something about just like we're hanging out we're going room to room we're to tossing some switches we're you know to grabbing nodes and like doing our little upgrades like there was such a a fun in the habitual nature of the game design and i think they've done they did some like incredible things with sound and just atmosphere that really helped keep it feeling fresh just by the fact that it is inherently a very straightforward gameplay loop of you're going you're looting you got your little objective you're going from point a to point b and then back again and you know that kind of thing um but yeah really liked it would be pretty shocked if it's not in my top 10 for the year wow. um Really Wait, did I, I, didn't you have a thing against uh, like remakes making it into the top tens? That's more for game of the year. Uh, I don't really like mm -hmm. a remake being game of the year because I'm like, uh, you can, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had great design in 1990, whatever, or 2000, whatever, when you came out with it. Um, top ten, I'm more liberal with because it's just like the best games of the year, and I'm like, that's fine. Who cares? No one else does that. There's no Fair point in me doing it. Let me just let me just give in. Um, but I probably would. I don't think I'd ever pick a remake for game of the year, but also I feel like most years there is a game better that's new or with maybe like, I forgot what came out when RE2 remake came out because that was really good. But 2019, yeah. man. I, 20, like, RE2 remake was my game of the year by the end of that year, but then going back, I, I, I go back and play 2019 games often and it changed. I feel like my 2019 game of the year changes every single year where what I played Sekiro oh, shortly was after. Control. Oh, say that again? Control. That was 2019, right? That was 2019, yeah. Control was in my top three. I think my uh, Control and Jedi, both my main issues were the bugs that happened at launch. And like those kind of kept them a bit under oh, yeah. terrible maps as well. And terrible maps, yeah. Weirdly okay. similar problems for both of those games. But I, they were ultimately did, great games. Okay, the map wasn't good in Control because I can't say that it is. Like, I feel like it's objectively bad. But I didn't really get lost in that game ever. I feel like they, labeled the, they labeled the world really well in my opinion like every, all the doors were labeled so i don't know i just read the doors and i like was like oh we're going here i got lost one time in that whole game but i will say when i got lost i was like desperately lost really lost <laughs> was, was it in that maze were you in the ashtray maze yeah. oh hell no 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 I, I rocked that maze also that maze is one of the best video game sequences of all freaking time i feel like god but it's yeah at least like top 25 but yeah re2 was up, up there for me in 2019 uh, uh yeah those two games uh control and jedi and then like later on i played sekiro and i was it was one of the best action games i ever played and then i like a year later i played death stranding i was like it was also one of the best games i ever played and then like well i guess like um apex also came out that year and that was very high yeah. up i might have been actually my game of the year but yeah i have a rotation of 2019 game of the years i fucking love 2019 um as a gaming year um but yeah dead space you know the more I hear people talk about it, the more I'm like, I really got to play this game. The only thing for me is that I've, I'm survival horrored out because I, I binged the hell out of Callisto Protocol. And uh, there's a lot of games coming out. So I'm like, man, I kind of need a, I need a little bit of, of a break. That's fair. There's, That's like a, fair. there's a gap I... in March last time I looked at my calendar. So I might, I might get to that in March, but we'll see. You should, you, and you liked Callisto like pretty well, right? Yeah, I like, I like Callisto. I feel like you're, if you liked Callisto, you were like love dead space which is like a not interesting comment because it's like kind of common Similar. sense yeah but frankly like i was not hot on callisto at all I, I only played the first like two hours of it and i was like I, I think i've seen enough and playing dead space for i think i also played two to four hours like my first session with it and literally everything about that game was better and like i know it kind of sucks to say like to just like knock down callisto for that but like it, so many things were done the same but just better and i was like this is oh man like it, it really is just so so well done like i think you're gonna really love it uh when you end up making time for it but hell yeah yeah tell me about um, we were here too we were here too have you played we were here the I series not, yet no you need to play you did what are you playing with uh yami right now because this is a very like oh this is a co-op joint mm -hmm. yeah, me and yami are we're, we're like halfway through the dlc of escape academy 
Nice. And then I'm okay. trying to convince her that when Wild Hearts come out comes out, we play Wild Hearts. But mm. I, we can. We were. Is is it a puzzle game? Yes. Oh. Okay. It is Operation Tango, but like slightly not as good. Uh, just because Operation Tango is really freaking fire. But we were here. Uh, co-op series. You have you know each need, need your own copy of the game to just kind of like play it or whatever because uh, it's on separate screens. And yeah, you kind of the premise is you stumble across this abandoned building you're like out in the winter and you're seeking shelter so you can like go inside and you'll have to like just describe you know what's going on in the room and then try to figure out okay what what information do you have that like i need to just get us through this like puzzle room so it might be something like let's see a, a simple example would be um okay i on my end i have a bunch of like weapons on my left to right i have a wheel like in the center and then i have like pictures and it's like okay well i have the same pictures and the knights underneath those pictures have like certain kinds of swords and shields in their hand um a lot of the game is also contingent on i think delivering details correctly because so often when they give you those like kind of matching images there are several images that are kind of similar it's like okay well it's this knight but he's facing to the right and he has like a blue, sh you know, garbot or something like that. Um, so it's a lot of just kind of communicating, figuring things out um, and trying to like get a sense of, well, what's the other person's situation look like or how can I do this? The trophies are super fun too, because much like Operation Tango, it does the, you play as like two different characters. Like, so you run through the game twice, essentially. Mm. And that's pretty much all you have to do for the Platinum. Um, for the second game, which is called We Were Here 2, that's the one I just played, you also need to, like, I guess solve this. It's not, like, that crazy of a mystery, but I don't want to spoil it. Like, there's a a way that, like, at the end of the game, like, only one of you can escape, like, light spoilers. But there's a way in that game where both of you can escape, so you have to, like, figure that out, and that's the final and, like, hard trophy. Mm. Um, and they're all kind of based like that. So, like, I got We Were Here because it's free, I think, on on pc and like super cheap on console um we got that on a whim to just see like okay is this gonna rock with us we both loved it um they had we were here forever which is their fourth game that came to ps5 fairly recently so i hit them up i'm like hey can i get a code for this because like i played it i'm into this franchise let's go they're like sure and then i realized oh shoot we're missing the, the two games in the middle so then we bought those so it's been like a just a Wait, what, was the, what was the third game called um we were here together <laughs> All right, that's, that's all right. We were here. We were, we're here, here too. too. It's we're... not the best. Yeah. It's not the, you know, it's like, like together too. You, you <laughs> had me with you had me with. We were here too, and then you said sure. we were here forever, and I was like, oh, what was the third one called? They you should know? have gone yeah. with three. We're here. See, see, <laughs> that that's great. <laughs> okay, three. We're here, and it's like a game that you, me, and Greg play. Like that would be come yeah, on. three three player co-op. That would, that would be fire. But um, how long yeah, was the playthrough? Hmm, that's a good question. Because I'm going to play it twice for the Platinum. I got to... I, I feel like it's like an hour. Wait, really? Something. I feel like it's pretty short. Oh, that's so sure. short. You just you might have just sold me. <laughs> it's... I'm going to do the How to Be real fast. This says three hours. I don't know if it's three hours. I mean, even that still is short. It's definitely... The three hours sounds like it could be right. I feel like it depends on, you know, how long it takes you to solve it. Um, They do have a shtick where you, like, talk through the in-game walkie-talkie. But frankly, we just don't use that just because it's a little easier to hear. Which I get that's part of, like what they're going for but you know that's obviously whatever you want to do you can do voice chat if you do the in-game chat um and i think the second one was easier than the first one and that kind of makes sense because i think they're you know as they progress through this franchise i'm sure they discover like different things they want to do like ways to make it more streamlined um the first one also had harder trophies like one of the trophies in the first one is like you have to complete all the puzzles without making any mistakes which even when you know the solutions like since the puzzles change every time like the randomized like the kind of stuff that you get it's not like you can just like memorize it and do it again like you'll know how to do it so you can do it really fast but you still have to like run through the communication bits back and forth um but yeah i really like it i think they're super well designed um we were here forever sounds like that would be the end i don't know if they plan on making a fifth one or if they're going to do like a similar but different franchise but like this is a franchise that I now stand. I'm playing all of them. I was on the Hell website yeah. looking at the merch. They sell on a $135 snow globe that I desperately want, even though it's a freaking $135 snow globe. But I fuck with this franchise heavy. Y'all should go play it. It is good. Barrett, what's the title of We Were Here 5? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is, this is tough. This is tough. There's not that many five puns. Because, like, Scream 5, we would refer to as 5 Cream, because they oh, made the lesson to a 5. Yeah. Um, 
Oh man, that's a that's a tough one. That's a doozy. Let me think. Oh, I'll, I'll let you are, think. Are on you that. know what it would be? It wouldn't be that like um, five worked into the title, but like the first like V part of the first uh, like in the first we. Would be oh, highlighted be red, highlighted to showcase, different color. Uh, yeah, V, we're here forever. V, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> You're a vampire this time. Okay, no, we were here vampires, and the V is meant to be an homage to the fact that it's. Yeah. Oh, line. actually, that'd be fire. We were here V, and like the V is and, red, and then it's dripping blood. And they drop it on Halloween. It is a little okay. So it's not at all like a scary game. Like I don't want people to think it's scary at all because it it's not. Be. But well, here's the thing. It there is like um. And I think it was in the first game where, like, at one point, this kind of weird, like, shadow puppet thing's there. And you can kind of, like, like, there's definitely, I haven't thought a lot about it. And also, I'm not smart enough to probably deduce this. But there definitely is, like, an interesting lore through line with, like, some of the stuff going on. I think if you would, were to put more thought into it, which is kind of fun. So, yeah. Anyway, I stand this franchise. It's real good. We're going to oh, yeah. play more probably on, I think Valentine's Day, we probably would do the next one. Because they're pretty easy to get through. Uh, before I even talk about talk about what I picked to play uh, this week on PlayStation, uh, during the unboxing, I swear Greg mentioned that he was going to be a, a bit more delicate and careful with the with the PSVR tube unboxing, and I'm I'm looking right now at a big old big old tear over here. Look at this. This is not a. It's not meant to be torn like that. Fucked up. It's fucked Here's up, a question Greg. for you, Bless. How do you open your like? holiday or birthday presents like are you a carefully unwrap guy are you a tear into the paper like what how are how are they wrapped are we talking about like a standard christmas gift like yeah with, oh i'm tearing those open yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah but like a playstation vr2 box is different these are sacred well, like, these are meant to be they have flaps first of all they have the tape that you cut through and then they have the flap that you gently open so that in case they do the box again anytime in the future you can reuse it am i ever going to reuse the box probably not no, but you can, I don't know, you can come up with an excuse to, like, fill it with stuff. Is that what you do? Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, I have, um, like, from the PR side of things, you know, like, if we get, like, mailers. Like, I have my Mario plus Rabbids mailer box, because it's pretty big, and I use it to put other PR stuff inside of. So it's, like, a weird, like, <laughs> container of just stuff that doesn't fit on my shelves or something that I got from, like, PR. I tend to put my, my leftover boxes my empty love for boxes under my bed and like my wow. i i've had i've like gone back and i've like started cleaning out because i'm like why do i have all this shit under my bed and like i look at it and it is but like old ass headphones that i don't even own anymore just a box for that thing is under my bed and i'm like looking through and there's even a ps4 okay, box how do you how do you feel about like when you get good actual boxes though because like you got the escape academy a mailer when that went out right like yeah. the little puzzle box did you keep that box? I did because it's a nice quality box. It's like it's like wooden, like it's real, like it's like an actual box. At some point, it is okay. These are taking up too much space, and so if I have no utility for the box, and if I can't like give it away, then I I, I toss it. Um, I have the C the seafood mailer came in a I big chest, too. and I can't bring myself to throw it away because I love seafood, and the chest actually does look really cool, but it is just taking up space, and so it, it it's it's a problem. But you know, it, it it often comes down to me just throwing shit away. Anyway, uh, this week, in terms of what I picked to play on PlayStation, I've been playing quite a bit of Redacted. That's right, Redacted. I can't talk about a lot of what Game I've been playing. Game of the playing. year every year, Redacted. Exactly. I um, can't believe you're playing Uncharted 5, Bless. Just tell us about it. I can't, man. I can't. PlayStation, PlayStation oh, will shit man. me down. I'm looking Jim Ryan in the eyes right now, and he's not happy. He's That's not, not happy. Jim Ryan. That's Mike on the couch. That is Mike on the couch. He looks... <laughs> Mike, for a second, I thought you were Jim, bro. I thought you were Jim. Because it's got, you got your games out. And I expect Jim to have his games out when he's here Jesus, in person. All right. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm playing a lot of Redacted. Uh, I, this is what I'll say, Janet. There's this game called FIFA that mm -hmm. I've been addicted to for a while. Right? I've been playing a lot of FIFA for the last month, in it, for the last two months, actually. And it's become a problem because I, I, FIFA has sort of swayed my, my um, attention from other games, right? Like, when a, a games like Season will come through or Dead Space will come through and other games. And I'm just like, well, I kind of just want to play FIFA, right? FIFA has been my comf comfort game for a while. I made the hard decision this last week that I'm done for now, right? I got to really? I got, I wave off the FIFA addiction. Yeah, because I think it's, it officially got into addictive territory. So where, should I not ask you to play FIFA again? Like, should I just wait till you come to me kind of thing? I would say give me until March. If I, can, I just want to make it the next okay. month without playing FIFA. I just got to take the self-control back. 
is the thing. Because what ha- what would happen is I would get home immediately, immediately, immediately. I'm like, all right, let's boot up FIFA. And after a while, I was like, I can't do this anymore because now I'm actually losing hours <laughs> of my day to FIFA. And I got other games to review and I got other things to do. And so it's been a solid six days without me booting up FIFA. Um, but I have been booting up a different addiction, which is Hitman 3. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Hitman 3 late, lately. Uh, I talked about the Hitman freelance mode uh, quite a bit on both this show and KHD. And I continue to play it. I continue to love it. It is, of course, if you missed it, Basically a roguelite mode that they added into Hitman where you start off in Agent 47's safe house. You have this, uh, you have like the safe room where you have like, you know, your weapons rack. You have uh, like different rooms that you can go into. You have like a, <laughs> you can unlock different rooms in your house depending on how high you get in level. At like level six or whatever, you unlock the bathroom. Level 10, you unlock upstairs and so on and so forth. And it's a really neat um, idea just in terms of what they do with the safe house and how they unlock rooms and how they um, uh, progress your character and all, and all that stuff. But then also the mode itself uh, is just fun for how high stakes it is and like, you know, how they build um, uh, all these targets for you to have to take out in a row where it is you have like anywhere from, I want to say like 16 missions or something like that. And then there's four of these missions that you hit periodically where you have to um, identify your target based on characteristics and like, are they wearing glasses? Are they wearing earrings? Like, do they match up with who the actual target is? And it is so fun. I cannot stop playing it. I've started streaming it, and it is such a fun streaming game. Hitman. I, I mentioned this on Twitter about a week or so ago. That like Hitman. I think Hitman the uh, the current version of Hitman Three, Hitman World of Assassination, that contains all the maps from the Hitman trilogy. I think is one of the best stealth games uh, of all time. And with that, I think it's also just one of the funniest games. Um, I'm playing this game on stream and like having things go, go to shit because I am like, all right, what if I throw this rubber duck that's also a proximity explosive at my target and see what happens and then like shit going to calamity and everybody freaking out it's so funny every single time because there's so many different ways in which things can go wrong in hitman there are so many systems that are playing at the same time and uh i absolutely love it i i I can't get enough of it and i think hitman 3 might be one of those games that i keep coming back to for maybe forever you know like i've been playing hitman i've been playing i guess hitman since hitman 1 um they came out on 2016 right for for last gen and it's pretty much been that same game with updates since then like all the the like um you know sequel like hitman 2 hitman 3 came out right but they were mainly the same game with tweaks and updates and minor things that were upgraded but ultimately they're pretty much that same game and i've been playing that same game since then right for like almost uh what seven years something like that and it still continues to be fun. It still continues to be a good time. Um, and yeah, like I think this this was really the mode. I think that is really settled in the fact that Hitman Three might be just one of my um, my favorite games. Right? It's 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 a fantastic time. And the more I play it, the more I'm like, wow, they really achieved something here. And so, shout out to Hitman Three, aka Hitman World of Assassination. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been it. For P.S. I love you, XOXO. Uh, remember, this has been your weekly PlayStation podcast. You can watch live right here on patreon.com slash kind of funny or later on podcast services around the globe. Until next time, game daily. <laughs>